Diamond Precision Engineering have just bought not only one, but two Nakamuras, a WT150 and an AS200. I'll be speaking to Harry inside about how they've revolutionized the business. We've traveled to the Wirral today, Diamond Precision Engineering. Who are you and what do you do? So Diamond, my dad started the company back in 86 and he's built it up from then. We started as a machine shop making tools, so, you know, press tools and fixtures, and he's built it up from there then to be a CNC machine shop, laser cutting and fabrication across three sites. He's always had me and my brother very much involved and inspired us into it. So I'm now here at the machine site and my brother has really built the laser cutting site and built that into a whole other thing by itself. And we just recently invested now into Nakamura technology. We were talking about it, not just one machine is a big investment, but two is as well. Yeah. So what was the need as well to buy brand new, I suppose, machines rather than we were talking about repairing old machines and the reliability yeah. of that? Well, I think you know, we've always been, my dad loves an auction, but we've had lots of auction buys, and some of them go well and some of them don't go well, but we've had you know, historically a lot of older machines, but we really got a sense of it when we bought, bought the new laser cutter because we've really seen the maintaining an older machine surprise to you know, buying a brand new one, so the payments on the new one can be cheaper than the maintenance cost of an older one. So again, we had older lathes here that we, you know, the reliability was an issue, so planning jobs against them was an issue so you know and the support and getting people in to repair them when they did go wrong so the idea of the new machine is it would just come in we could rely on it trust it and and basically get stuff through faster for a thing for us now we realize we've got to keep being competitive we've got to keep being faster and better basically so you know we had a job that i quoted i was three times too expensive wow. and i really wanted to do it it was a job i really wanted so obviously there's people doing it so i want to think how do i do it and then now obviously we've got this machine we've now undercut that price and now we're doing four thousand parts on this machine through that order so it it proves it that you know the the new machine the speed of the new machine is we have to do to be competitive you're really happy about these machines yeah. and uh, what sort of parts are you making here because you, you you're machining them now in a different way to what you were so yeah. talk to me about the operations the cycle times and things like that yeah well i think for a lot of this was it you know between me and my dad and my brother like we all we do really enjoy what we do here like for us this is like you know we could buy a flash car but this is more this is more fun to us this is yeah this is more interesting so is the aspect of it improving the business and just we enjoy doing it so it, you know it, i think from finding faster ways to make parts and being more efficient you know again is really rewarding and really you know uh, satisfying so what we're doing here you know what we're trying to do is eliminate you know basically stuff coming off the lathe and going to the middle of the machine stuff being on the floor stuff you know you know as few as operations as possible you know i find it like you know very interesting you know, like i'll sit there at night and come into the next day and say to the guys i've, I've had this idea can we do this you know because uh you know, or, you know how can we make these parts in the most efficient way like you know we, we've parted off with slitting discs to minimize material you know we try every little thing we want to try to try and improve the process if we've really tried and what we've tried that in the past but the machines let us down what we get here is we come up with the idea you know can we do this in this way and the machine doesn't let us down the machine just does it so that's the event that's what i'd say is really been a really rewarding from these machines is that you know we, we see something we see a, you know, someone doing a process that we want to try and in the end our, our machines let us down whereas now this we can do it it's really great listening to you talk about these machines and yeah. it, i can see the cogs ticking in your head about talking about how can we do different operations and things and we've got you've got a machine over there on the as 200 a part on there and you're actually pushing through the bar feeder um squared bar yeah. Um, and so you're doing a square part and you were saying that would originally be done on milling. How did that click in your head? Well, maybe we can move this to a, you know, it's not a conventional way to do it, but yeah. maybe it may work and it, and it does. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a part I used to do myself on the CNC milling machine. It's horrible. Like you'd have to knock it down in the vice, you know, you know, to get it really level. It was a really tricky little horrible thing. It was about three operations. It's 316 stainless. It just wasn't nice. And it was, uh, we're very, really, very lucky that we have brilliant people here and that was actually one of our tenors idea to put it on that machine so obviously we now do it in one go bar fed so it's sitting there running by itself 
and you know it's making a better part it's the bearing the part so you get more consistency you know so it's it's improved the part it's reduced cycle time it's reduced having to have someone there which again you know is what we have to do you know being a little company you know we, we we've got you know if we just sat back people just overtake us so like, we've got to do that because if we don't do things like that you know we, we won't be here so it was down to really our guys coming up with a good great idea on that one to do it but that's doing basically what even with that machine even though it's not got the sort of spindle and the twin turret that machine is in the way you know it's really really impressed me because there's loads of jobs in that that even with a single spindle single turret we're doing in one go you're still able to do still it still able to do it so you know again there's jobs we're doing now where we've got two a family of two components and again it's down to our guys being great at programming it but they program the first profile and the second part together and then part two parts off so you're getting both both off at the in same one time. cycle so they're coming off it together so and again it's so unfinished there's a one that we're doing there it's a laser cut we used to laser cut it we did a, a prep up on the turning then we do a final turn off and then we put it in a special machine that cut teeth in it okay. whereas now we get straight into that machine in one operation it, it turns it and then it cuts the teeth as well so it's actually being used as more of a form cutting machine it's not you know, doing conventional town and all milling. And it's, it's, it's great that you can use such a small footprint of a machine. Yeah. It's, it's quite tiny compared to other machines. And then you've got the bigger WT-150. They've both got light tooling, both yeah. got parts catchers, both got bar feeders. So that's a lot of automation within the machine. So when you're putting a job on, can you go home and confidently think, I don't need to worry about this machine? Yeah. It can run and I can come in Saturday and it's made however many parts. Yeah, I mean, I, what we found, like, that's another art form in itself. Like, making the machine make a part while we're here is, is half the battle. You know, what we've learned from it's not something we've done before, going home and leaving them is all the other things you encounter. You know, you're getting the parts out, you know, where, where do these parts go? So if you're making 700 parts in one night, you know, we're not so bad on the WT because we've got the, the uh, conveyor and we're putting them out. We've got a trolley there with it on. The AS200, you know, it's limited on its part, on its bin at the moment, so we're looking at enlarging that. But we've also dropped parts into the swarf, put them out for the swarf conveyor, and used a like an old gold sieve style to get them out with the swarf. So you know, it, it's all these challenges that you know. Uh, again, it's just learning process. On, on the WT, we've had set parts when we left them running, and the swarf's been too long and stringy, so it's pulled it back through the conveyor, yeah. jammed the conveyor, and I come at. Uh, like the 11 o'clock one night and the machine was full of swarf i'd never seen a machine like it wasn't it. able to it was always more on the turret so we've changed the process now you know uh, we're breaking the swarf up more so you've got like three seconds to a cycle but now we can we left it around from friday morning to saturday night totally by itself and the parts one thing i've been really impressed especially uh, when i've come back and checked them the, the, the how well it holds size so it you know the parts are wet you know as they're where we left them so we haven't got massively let into tool life management yet you know and but so that's another step to. as well that's another step to learn so what? there's a lot to learn in there i think the, you know it's the uh, mythical like uh you know, fantasy to leave your machines running and have that light out production but i think you know it's not something that you know, you've, you've it's an art form to learn we're still very much learning <laughs>